This is Erica Tiffany Wells, and this is the final spotlight for Black History Month. I'm introducing you to Orion Hunter, the senior staff accountant here at Fuse Auto Tech. Let's go. How did you get started in accounting? Uh, I started in accounting through just being interested in numbers and taking an accounting class in college. I went to St. Cloud State, so uh, that was always one of my skills. And I got in the accounting world right away and progressed through the classes and took an internship at an accounting firm. So worked as a CPA for a while and um, very valuable knowledge obtained during that during that course, but uh, not maybe the most exciting work. and. Um, so I tried to find a little bit of a change and wanted to do accounting for something that was more in my, uh, my interest. So eventually came into the automotive industry to do accounting for a car company instead of a CPA firm. So tell me about that transition, right? So you're a numbers guy. You like to be in, you know, in data and spreadsheets. That's not everybody's gift. So it's very talented of you to be able to take that and own it. And you decided to go into the automotive and tech industry. Tell me about how you were able to merge those together. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, they're, they're completely different worlds. So it was, uh, it was a big jump. And I was a little nervous, especially to make a change from what I had gone to school for and to um, you know, make such a significant change in my field and to go from um, what is considered like public accounting as a CPA to private accounting for a business. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, just the way that it's just an entirely different world, the way the accounting is done. It's more of a cyclical world where you do things on a monthly basis, whereas um, tax accounting is is just tax season primarily, and that's what I spent. Um, that's why I specialized in was tax accounting. So I would do you know 80% of my work in the year in the first four or five months of the year, and then basically just uh, kind of sail through the rest of the year. And it's nice to have that slow time, but um, it also you know, it's it's good to be busy and to be able to, 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 you know, to test yourself and to use your skills. And so it was nice to, uh, you know, when I finally found uh, an automotive or an opening in the automotive industry, um, I've always been interested in, you know, technology and automotive, the automotive world. So um, it was a big change, though, going from, you know, being in like that more rigid government based system where there's a lot of rules, there's, you know, everything is to be done a certain way. And there's obviously rules all around accounting, but I have a lot more freedom now. Um, working for a startup like Fuse, so. So speaking of that, so Fuse is a startup, right? It actually was built in-house at Walzer, uh, and a startup in and of itself is a big deal, right? And you're joining this automotive group, you find out that you're part of this startup, and you decide, I'm gonna take a chance and get in here. Tell me about the skills that you use in this silico environment, this 30 days at a time, the pressure's there, the intensity's there. Tell me what a day in, in your life looks like. Oh, a day, a day in my life. Oh, that's pretty, you know, I wear a lot of different hats being in a startup and that's probably what most people would say is, you know, there's a lot of, there's just so many different things that you have to consider and a lot of people wear a lot of different hats. So, um, you know, I, I oversee all the accounting for, for a fuse and, um, you know, so I do a lot of um, accounts payable, accounts receivable, make sure that we're getting our bills paid, make sure that our bills that we send out are getting paid and also a lot of high level things. Um, including budgeting, making sure that you know we have sufficient cash flow, and just making sure that uh, you know things are recorded the way they need to be. Um, so it's it's a very busy uh, it's a busy job. You don't know what you don't know until you experience things, and so it can make it really difficult for anyone in a startup when um, you're faced with you're faced with challenges that you've never experienced and you don't really know how to tackle. Like most of the people that are in this company are doing something that they've never done before. So it really um, it's challenging for everybody, but um, I think that is also what makes it rewarding, you know, to the point I had made earlier of being able to test yourself and um, use your skills in a way that uh, you enjoy um, is valuable. And so um, I, I think I get to do that every day. <laughs> so speaking of what you do every day, so you take data and, and not just move data around and put it in a spreadsheet, but you have to take that information and, and bring something out of it, like tell stories with the data, right? So tell me about that. Tell me about that experience. Because when I look at the numbers, it's it's the math in me do not go well together. So I am dependent on people with your kind of gift 
So just kind of tell me how that works and what skills are important and necessary for someone who may be looking for a position in accounting, attention to detail. Tell me about some of the personal skills, soft and hard skills that you use in your job every day. Yeah, yeah, that's a great uh, question. I think uh, it's very analytical and being able to um, really analyze like what you're looking at. Um, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's numbers at the face value, but it is a story um, deeper. And there's, you know, it tells, um, it talks, it shows trends, it shows um, growth or, or maybe not growth. It can, it can tell you a story of the direction that the company is going. Um, and you need to, you know, as an accountant, you want to be able to you know, find the things that you might not see on the surface, being able to dig deeper, being able to um, audit the reports uh, that the company uses for their various needs, um, and actually to be able to, you know, give that to somebody who doesn't know how to read those sheets, um, and, and them to be able to use that information and it be relevant. So, um, you know, being able to have provide timely, relevant information to um, the people who need to, who need to uh, absorb it um, is really valuable. And so, um, I, I, I have great pride in my attention to detail and my, you know, my determination to have to, for accuracy. Um, it's really important that things are done the right way. So uh, I really value that. I love that. Speaking of your values and what you're proud of, tell me something that you're proud of about yourself, about your job, about what you love to do. Um, <laughs> something I'm proud of. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I am unapologetically myself, I think. Um, I just, uh, I, I, I really genuinely try to be a good person but i don't uh you know I, i'm i'm live for myself first and i'm i'm willing to i know i'm willing to put myself out there i'm willing to try new things i'm willing to you know make a mistake i'm willing to you know be viewed in a certain way and I, as long as i'm happy with it then that's me perfect example is i was at my i was with my wife a few weeks ago at their annual award ceremony and they had a black tie event so they wanted people to all dress kind of nice black tux black tie all that stuff and I, I take it upon myself to go with a gold floor de lee uh, ja suit jacket on. Totally just stuns everybody, like just stood out from the crowd. This isn't even my company, but I'm just like, for me, I'm perfectly happy if that's what I want to wear and I, and I think that I look good, then I don't care what anybody else thinks. So I'm very proud of my, my ability to, to do that. Where does that sense of self come from, right? Because in, in in when you think of the idea of an accountant, I'm sure there's a picture that pops up in people's heads. Like this is what an accountant should or shouldn't look like, right? And then you come with this flavor and this style and you're breaking trends and you're being yourself. Where does that inner confidence come from? And how could you tell someone maybe struggling with not feeling professional and saying, I don't know if I can be myself and be accepted. Tell us about that. I think, you know, one of the biggest things for me that gave me a lot of self-confidence is just being um, really an ind independent as a child. Um, it took, um, you know, just my family situation required that I, I kind of mature a lot, a little quicker than maybe some people do. And so I, um, I had to kind of be able to be willing to step into the world and make mistakes at a very young age. And so um, I'm sure, you know, I've made many, made many mistakes and grown from them and learned a lot from them. So um, that's probably my biggest driver is just having to have step into the world and realize that it's not always on your side, but you make the most out of it and you keep on going. And it's worked out pretty well for me so far. I love that. I love that. It reminds me of a, a quote I read. It said that um, kind of whatever happens to you, you can either choose to decide that to learn from it or grow from it, right? And or run from it. And so you took an opportunity of the things that happened to you and you allowed yourself to grow from it. So it's a testament to who you are and the confidence that you have and other people can see it in, in, your, in your suit at the holiday ceremony and, yeah. and be yourself. And I think that uh, is an attractive thing. So kudos to you. Thank you. So when people think of the automotive industry, they're usually thinking service or sales, but there are so many other jobs in the automotive industry and specifically at Walzer because how, how our setup is, right? So tell us a little bit about the idea of accounting and some of the other jobs that you've been exposed to, especially at a startup like Fuse and how people might want to get into the business and some of the opportunities that you think are there. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, when they think about it, the car industry, they, they see, they only think of like what happens inside the dealership. And again, like you said, there's so many other things. There's a lot of other ancillary things, um, whether it's accounting or there's, you know, purchasing department, there's all these other departments um, that all these things happen behind the scenes. You know, um, all that you see is what happens inside that building. But there's so many things that got all the cars into that building and so many things that happen afterwards. So um, there's a lot of different opportunities. And um, to your point of me cha making the change from, you know, being a CPA to this world, I didn't exactly know what I was looking for. I just knew that I wanted to find something that was more in the automotive industry. 
And so I didn't necessarily, you know, I, I didn't know what opportunities there were here or that were out there for anybody. And I, but, um, you know, I took that dive and, and looked at, you know, found something that was aligned with what I was interested in. And it was just, it was perfect for me to be able to step into the role with Fuse. I love it. So what does Black History Month mean to you? And how do you find yourself celebrating it? It's a good question. I think for me, um, that Black History Month is um, a time for people to um, take time to remember um, the past and the the treatment of Black people throughout history, and to be able to uh, understand and recognize that um, you know it wasn't so so long ago that um, the you know that it wasn't just maybe um, the it wasn't just acceptable um, to you know to distinguish people between each other, but it was legal. Um, and it wasn't even, you know, long before that, that, you know, black people were only considered three fifths of a man. So um, it's, you know, it's in such recent past that I think that it's important for people to be able to take time to remember those things and to, you know, acknowledge and understand the differences and the struggles that black people and the culture of black people that has been so suppressed and so forgotten about throughout history um, should be celebrated and should be remembered. Absolutely. I, I think when I got in the auto industry, one of the things that stood out is that I, I felt like the only one, you know, I'd look around and I didn't see people that looked like me and it made me feel like sometimes I didn't fit in. Um, and I'm sure you may have experienced something like that in accounting and some of the professional environments that you've been in, in the past and maybe looked around and said, I don't know, do I fit here or not? Tell me a little bit about how that struggle is as an African-American man. Yeah, I, I think to your point, um, I still sometimes experience that. And, um, you know, the society as a whole is definitely trending in the right direction. And a company like Walzer does a great job of acknowledging um, the, those differences and being, you know, respectful of them. Um, but, you know, I still think that I, I do feel like that a lot of times or, you know, in various different situations where you look around and, you know, you see you see that you're the only person that looks like you. Um, um, you know, in, the, in my accounting firm, it was very much like that. And, you know, throughout different, throughout different experiences that we, that you go through in life, um, you feel like that. It doesn't always have to just be with work. It could just, it could be whether it's on social media or it could be through, you know, other forms of media that you, that, you know, that you see. And um, it just feels like sometimes you don't have people that you can, um, you, know, you don't see yourself in people. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to connect with people and to have that like a relation. So, but um, over time, it's definitely gotten better, and that's why I think Black History Month is so important because it's important for people to acknowledge that, um, you know, not how far we've come, and but also to remember that, like, this is what it used to be like, and so we need to, we have to be aware of that. What do you say to people who say it's the past, it's the history, like, let's move forward, why are we talking about the past? There's a lot of embarrassment and anger and hurt um, when you think of the history of, of African Americans in, in general, and a lot of people just don't want to talk about it, and it's uncomfortable, even to the point that they will be willing to silence it in schools and to get rid of books. Um, what would you say to someone who said, "Hey, it's the past. Can we just move forward?" Um, you know, it's it's tough because I, you know, I don't. It's hard to you know to have. It's hard to disagree about something like that. You know, a lot of people can be really stern in their ways, but um, I think that it's just. It's so important uh, for people to recognize that, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago, even though it was, it, it is in the past, hypothetically, you know, there, everyone has, you know, there are things that happened yesterday that you could say were in the past. It, it wasn't that long ago that, um, you know, there are people who still, there are still people who lived through segregation. There are, there are people who, who went to school in segregated schools and grew up in a world where it was socially acceptable to be, to, to be, a, to promote segregation. And so... It wasn't that long ago, so for so for people to think that and to and to try to use that argument, they probably know people that lived through that lived through those times, and so it, it can't be that long ago. Um, so I think that they should realize that. Absolutely, and I, I guess in your field too, data is is so important. And the past is not that far ago, where you can delete a spreadsheet that from two years ago and it totally wreck everything you had. Right? You're like, I needed this. This is important because we look at the data from the past and. To your point about what you do every day is it allows you to make decisions to say how are things trending so we have to be able to figure out the past to figure out the future and to figure out what needs to be changed so exactly it's, it's interesting that uh the concept that something could just kind of be wiped away or, sh or pushed under the rug if data and numbers can't be pushed under the rug then people and culture and influence can't either definitely not and uh yeah culture and culture is a big one i mean i think that um you know african-american culture 
throughout all of history has been, you know, has been suppressed. Um, you know, it's not like it's, it's not well recorded. It's not well documented. Um, you can find infinite amounts of recorded documentation of other forms of culture, whether it's European or whatever, but um, not as necessarily as accessible for uh, African-American culture. And so, um, you know, I think that, you know, it should be celebrated. And, you know, there are things that still, you know, even like, um, you know, African-American hair or like just differences that, you know, that people don't really quite understand, but it is like more of a heritage thing. And um, even, you know, for me, um, the hair, my hair is actually, it is a part, a big part of my identity. And it wasn't something that I realized until I kind of became an adult when I was be able, able to like create my own identity. Throughout my whole childhood, I had my hair cut differently. But as I got older and I just felt like it, it was such an integral part of me. Um, and now I, I love it. And I, I would be, I would be devastated if I had to cut my hair. Um, and, you know, I, I, and that for me is even something that I almost didn't really quite understand throughout, pa throughout the past. And because it's not really well documented how important actually that a lot of that, that you know, African American people will see their hair, for example. And so um, I, it, it really just ident I really identified with it when I eventually did grow my hair out and kind of change that. And it's really part of me now. I can absolutely agree and relate. The struggle is real, especially when it comes to hair. My son is a wrestler and uh, he has curly long hair like yours. And we were watching this YouTube video where a wrestler was, was had to cut his locks off in the middle of a game, in the middle of a match um, to wrestle. I remember, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was very devastating. And I, I tried to have these conversations with my son just so he can understand that this just happened six, seven months ago. It wasn't too long ago. And I never know what struggles he may face as a young African-American man. Um, and so it always gives me pride when I see, you know, young men like yourself who, who stand proud in, in their identity and their hair and what makes you you, because uh, it gives him permission too. Right. He sees you and says, God, this guy's an accountant. He has a great job. He's working for an awesome startup and he has curly, coily, beautiful fro like me. And he can say, then if you can do it, I can do it. Exactly. Yeah. They see somebody who they can relate to um, in a position where they didn't maybe think that they'd see themselves. Um, so, yeah, it's very valuable to, to have those role models. So I'm new to Minnesota. All right. I'm from Georgia. I've lived here for the last 20 years. And I'd say it's relatively diverse in pockets of Atlanta. But then there's also certain parts outside of Atlanta where it's not as diverse. And um, it, it was a little bit of a culture shock for me, kind of just seeing these different pockets of kind of still segregation, even in as a city as progressive as Atlanta is and a state as progressive as Georgia is. Tell me about what it was like to live here in Minnesota, about your, your childhood, how you grew up and what influenced you. Yeah. Minnesota, I would say, you know, probably a little bit different from the South. I would say it's definitely not quite as ethnically diverse. Um, you know, throughout my childhood, you know, I, the schools that I went to were predominantly, you know, surrounded with by white children. And so I think that for me, you know, I had a lot of influence um, in that respect. And I didn't really, wasn't really around a lot of people that I could relate to. I didn't feel like there was a lot of, a lot of ethnicity that I could relate to. And so, you know, a lot of my childhood, I, I associated more, more along the lines with Caucasian, the Caucasian kids I grew up with. And I played hockey and I, I you know, I really got into like winter sports and doing a lot of different things that you wouldn't necessarily consider like somebody of my, my ethnic diversity to maybe do. Um, and so that really, you know, I had a heavy, heavy influence on my childhood, but eventually as I got older, um, you know, I found that, you know, I became, you know, significantly more independent from like my family and be, was able to establish my own identity. And that was when I grew my hair out and, um, you know, started to get involved at St. Cloud State with some of the, the ethnic uh, groups that they had there and um, just kind of getting involved a little bit more in the community and trying to meet people and, you know, be able to relate to people that were like myself more. And uh, as I got older, it became a little bit easier. You know, when, when you're a child, I think you're, you're, uh, you don't really have the ability to go and experience things for yourself. And so you're kind of uh, forced to into the situation that you grew up in. Um, but eventually, as I got older, I kind of was able to, you know, switch that and kind of, you know, move towards more of a ethnic diverse background that I kind of now see myself having. Was there a moment that kind of triggered that or was it kind of a slow ease into that? I would say um, it was it was the day I stopped cutting my hair. Um, wow. That was uh, it was it's it's crazy how um, significant that changed the way that I look at myself. I I really I really saw myself as a Caucasian kid growing up. Um, you know, being mixed, it's hard to be accepted on either side. Um, the black the black kids saw me as a white kid. The white kids see me as a black kid. So 
Um, you don't really have the ability to like make a lot of friends and to be able to, like I said, experience different like diverse ethnic situations. And so until I got old, I played hockey all through my childhood. I listened to rock music and I definitely wasn't really your stereotypical black kid. Yeah. And then once I went to once I went to college, that's when I kind of like was able to step outside of my parents' house and I love my family. They were great. But it was just like I said, that's just you don't have the ability to decide like what you're exposed to. Right. And so then when I had that opportunity to kind of decide what type of things I would be exposed to um, and, you know, it, it really changed like I, I really changed what I would do. Um, I, you know, I started to go and go to, you know, basketball games and football games and go to different sporting events that I wasn't, uh, that I was never exposed to. I had never gone to a basketball game. I had never known anything about basketball. So I wanted to be able to find myself and college really helped me with that. And, uh, um, starting in, uh, probably about 2015, I, um, I have always cut my own hair and I stopped cutting my hair. Um, and I still, I still maintain it, but I don't, I never cut the hair on the top. And uh, I completely changed, changed person after that. I can tell your hair is very long. <laughs> You're always surprised when I, my son pulls one of his coils and it comes like down past his chin and they're like, magic. Yeah. <laughs> we have it's such crazy. great hair. Yeah. And it's, it's so thick and there's this, yeah, I love it. So, um, you know, hopefully I can keep it for a long time because it seems that uh, uh, it's not common. Hair isn't as common on my, my dad's side of the family. So <laughs> I'm doing everything I can. But my dad's from the South, so I, I don't think that the Southern heat does too, uh, isn't too nice to it. So hopefully that's one good thing about this. I had taking care of my hair. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure chatting with you. I've learned so much. I'm excited to, to know that I know somebody in accounting now. So when I need my reports and invoices done, I'm going to be yeah. But thanks again for your time, and it's really been a pleasure getting to know you. Yes, it was awesome getting to know you as well. Thank you.